Hey everybody, welcome to episode 99 of the Metal Detecting Show podcast. My name is Kieran, and I have been metal detecting now for nearly 30 years. This week, I talk about wired versus wireless. If you ask me, you should always go wireless. <laughs> Hey everyone, before we start, I want to thank you for listening to the podcast this week. If you want to support the show, there are many options available in the links in the episode notes below. If you want to interact with me and the show, that information is in there too. But most importantly, if you like this content and would like more, please don't hesitate to tell your friends and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hey everybody, I hope you had an amazing week this week. I'm seeing loads of fines coming in across the socials, giving me the want to get out there. This week, you can thank James Dickens for this week's topic about wired versus wireless headphones. So let's get on with the show. So when talking about wired versus wireless, you really are just talking about comfort versus latency. What's the definition of latency? Latency from a general point of view is the time delay between the cause and the effect of some physical change in the system being observed. Lag, as is known in gaming circles, refers to the latency between the input to a simulation and a visual or auditory response often occurring because of network delay in online games. So like I said, when talking about wired versus wireless, you're talking about comfort versus latency. So starting with comfort, there's no doubt that wireless headphones are superior when considered comfort. There's no wires to get tangled up in when you're getting up and down. There's no physical pull on your neck or an open port on your detector to let water in if you're beach hunting. However, there are a few sacrifices you need to make for that comfort. And let's address some of them here. For example, you're going wireless, so you're going to need another battery to charge and potentially a point of failure on your hunt, i.e. your headphones batteries died, which, to be honest, has happened to me in the past. Most wireless headphone batteries are designed for four hours of continuous use, depending on the Bluetooth version, which we'll get to that later on. But essentially, the higher the Bluetooth version, the higher power consumption it is on your headphones. In relation to waterproofing, with a wired set of headphones, it's relatively inexpensive to grab a submersible set compared to a wireless set, which are so expensive because they don't exist, as they have to defeat the laws of physics to allow Bluetooth or any wireless technology to work underwater. So any wireless headphones will only work when your control box on your detector is out of the water. So wired is the go-to when detecting below water. Wireless might work if you put the control box an inch or two away from your head underwater. And probably the most important factor when considering wired versus wireless is latency. Like I said, latency is the time delay between the cause and effect of some physical change in the system being observed. In metal detecting parlance, that's the time delay from when a coil picks up the resonant frequency from a target and it goes through the detector, through the codec and into your Bluetooth headphones. So the latency for a wired set of headphones is approximately 5 to 10 milliseconds where the wireless headphones can take a latency up to 100 to 300 milliseconds, which is an entirety when considering that it's one third of a second and your coil head will be a few centimeters off the pinpoint. If this is the case, it would require you to either slow down considerably or adjust how you would pinpoint. But why is there latency? It's going to speed of right, Kieran. Why does it take so long on wireless headphones? Well, to answer this, we need to look at the Bluetooth audio chain. Now I'm gonna focus on Bluetooth. There is wireless audio chain, but they're both essentially the same. So you have your transmitter or your detector and the receiver, your Bluetooth headphones, and it's not a straight line between them. It's not a wide road either. What I mean by this is picture the width of the road. The wider the road, the more cars that can travel the road. The narrower the road, the less cars can travel. If the road is so narrow, you might find only one car can travel a road at a time with the other cars waiting on a turn to travel. This is bandwidth and certain wireless protocols have differing sizes of bandwidth, which depending on size can limit the speed of connection. Now consider the cars as data packets and depending on the bandwidth, the more or less packets can travel the distance. What the hell are you talking about, Kieran? We're talking about audio signals here. 
Surely it's audio from start to finish. No, it isn't. It's data. The wireless protocol requires the analog audio signal to be converted to a digital data stream, which is chunked up into cars or data packets. To do this, the audio is converted using an audio codec with whatever version of Bluetooth or wireless version supporting. This all adds to the time of the journey. So it goes from signal processing on your detector through a codec, then it's chunked up and sent to your wireless headphones where it is reassembled if the wireless headphones support the codec used to chunk it up in the first place. Different versions of Bluetooth codecs have more or less latency. Looking at Bluetooth versions first though, starting with Bluetooth version 1, this is a range of 33 feet and a basic bit rate of 1 megabit per second. Bluetooth version 2 has a range of 100 feet. It also supports basic bit rate, but it also has enhanced data rate of 3 megabits per second. Bluetooth version 3 has all the previous mentioned, plus high speed or HS at 24 megabits per second. And then onto Bluetooth version 4, its range is 200 feet. It supports all those other speeds, but also has a low energy mode. And then you've got version 5, the latest, which is a range of 800 feet. It's got technology called slot availability masking, which essentially just reduces EMI, which we talked about two weeks ago. So the higher the version, the more bandwidth required and the more smarts it has to reduce latency. Now, I know before you all message in, I know there is subversions like 4.2, which are only minor improvements on the base versions. However, I believe the most important factor when considering Bluetooth headphone latency is what codec is being used. So an audio codec encodes or decodes a raw audio file, essentially compressing it so more data can be transported over the available bandwidth and then decompressed or decoded by the receiver, which in our case is our wireless headphones. What is key, both transmitter or detector and receiver or headphones must support the same audio codec. Some notable codecs are SBC subband coding. It's universally compatible, which essentially means every device supports this codec. It has an audio bitrate of 256 kilobits per second. And if there is any mismatch in any of the other codecs, it will default to SBC. Up next, you have AAC, which is 320 kilobits per second. It's higher quality audio, but it's very power hungry. And then we get into the APTX family, starting with just APTX, which is 384 kilobits per second. Again, better audio quality up to HD, which is 576 kilobits per second. And then onto the one some of you would be familiar with, aptxll or LL for low latency, which means it has low latency of approximately 32 milliseconds at 352 kilobits per second. Point of note, the Quest, the Knox, the Vanquish, all use aptxll. There are many others like LDAC, which is 990 kilobits per second, and high quality audio. LC3 claims to be superior to all, but there's very little data on that right now. So that's the industry wide codex, but there is some proprietary codex from the metal detecting brands, such as MineLab, which have ProSonic and Garrett, which is Zlink, which seem to ensure a proprietary codec to ensure low latency, as audio quality is not really important. So in my order of preference, if I had a choice, as a detectorist, I would go with brand proprietary first, so MineLab or ProSonic, Garrett, Z-Link. Then I would go with aptxll, which my Knox is using right now, but is also available in the Vanquish and Quest. And then I would default to the standard Bluetooth. But remember, if your codecs don't match up, you will default to SBC, which has the longest latency of all. That's why you've seen a lot of people buy standard Bluetooth headphones for their detector, which supports aptxll only for them to not work correctly or to default down to the standard Bluetooth. It's because they don't have a matching codec. You really need to watch out for the LL at after the APTX. If you want to buy a third party brand of Bluetooth headphones, ensure that it has that codec or has supportability for that codec. And these third party headphones will work with your detector. So to ask wired versus wireless, if comfort wasn't a factor or a need to go below the surface of water wasn't needed, 
I would go for convenience and go wireless. However, if latency, power consumption and submersibility is important to you, then it's wired all the way. That's it for this week. I hope you like this episode of the Metal Detecting Show podcast. Check out our website, www.themetaldetectingshow.com for this episode show notes. Check out our Patreon page. Check out our Buy Me A Coffee page, forward slash Metal Detecting, if you also want to support the show. If you want to leave me a voice message, you can do so on speakpipe.com forward slash The Metal Detecting Show. If you feel like taking your appreciation to the next level, feel free to leave me a positive review on any podcast directory of your choice. If you like this content and would like more, please don't hesitate to tell your friends and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We will chat to you all again next week. Get out there, eyes down, good luck and happy hunting.